Hello friends! My name is Miss Paige and today I'm going to be doing another interactive read aloud. And today we're going to be reading The Coal Thief, written by Elaine Adams and illustrated by Lauren Galagos. What do you see here? Yeah, I see a little boy holding some coal as well. Now, what do you think is gonna happen from what you see here? That's a good idea. One morning, Georgie went into the kitchen he poked around the pot-bellied stove, hoping to find a stray lump of coal. And look, there's Georgie. Don't bother, Georgie, Mama said. There's been no coal for three days. But I'm cold, he shivered in the icy kitchen. Put your coat on. Georgie took his coat down from the hook. When's Papa coming home? He's fixing a broken rail line. He should be home for supper. And look, there's Georgie putting on his coat because he's cold. And there is his mom. Just then, the door burst open and his friend Harley rushed in. Grab your boots, Georgie. We're going on an adventure. Georgie hurried to put on his boots. Where are we going? Trains coming. Aw, oh, Harley, trains come every day. Not this train. Come on, we don't want to miss it. Why do you think that Harley doesn't want to miss the train? And what do you think is on the train? Yeah, maybe a lump of coal. And look, there's Georgie putting on his boots and there's Harley. Harley had a wheelbarrow out front. They started walking down the road. Georgie had a lot of questions. What's the wheelbarrow for? He asked. It's a surprise. This train's carrying something special. Georgie's heart beat faster. Where is it coming from? Virginia. Georgie frowned. What's in Virginia? Black gold. Hurry up. We don't have much time. Do you like surprises? Yeah, me too. Look, it's snowy just like it is in Ohio. Georgie trotted to keep up with Harley. They walked to the train depot at the edge of town. Is this where the black gold is? Georgie asked. Quiet, we don't want anyone to see us. Why not? He whispered. It'll spoil the surprise. Harley crouched down behind a locomotive. So Georgie did the same. It was cold. Georgie's toes stuck out of the holes in his boots. Why do you think Georgie has holes in his boots? And why do you think he doesn't get any new ones? Yeah, maybe. And look, they're crouching behind a train car. There's Harley and Georgie. Look, you can see the holes in his boots. Th 
the blast of a whistle made him jump. Here she comes, Harley cried. A steam engine pulled into the station. Harley jumped up. This way, Georgie. They ran along the tracks to the end of the train. Harley lifted him up the side of a rail car. Georgie looked inside. It was filled with chunks of coal, an entire mountain of it, black gold. What do you think is going to happen next? Yeah, maybe. And look, there's the train. There you can see the coal. There's Harley putting up Georgie so that he can see inside. Georgie looked down at Harley. What should I do? Climb inside and toss some over. Georgie blinked. Isn't that stealing? Harley scowled at him. Aren't you tired of being cold every morning? Yes, but don't be a chicken, Georgie, or I'll tell on you and say it was your idea. Georgie slowly climbed over the top and landed on the hard lumps. He picked one up and tossed it over. Harley caught it and set it on the ground. Another, he said. Georgie grabbed two lumps and dropped them down. Harley grinned up at him. It's going to be a long winter, Georgie. Keep it coming. Do you think Georgie wants to do what his friend says? Why do you think he still does it if he knows what he is doing is wrong? Yeah, maybe. And look, there's Georgie throwing a piece of coal down to Harley. Georgie began throwing the pieces faster and faster. Suddenly, the train gave a jerk. Georgie fell backward. Georgie, get out of there, Harley called. But the mountain of coal had swallowed him up. The train began to pick up speed. Help me, Harley, Georgie shouted. He tried to push off the coal, but he just sank deeper into the pile. Oh no, what do you think is going to happen to Georgie now? Yeah, maybe. And look, there's Georgie and he fell into all the lumps of coal. And there's Harley yelling at him to get out of there. Then Papa's head appeared over the top of the rail car. Time to go, Georgie. Papa reached out his hand and pulled Georgie free. They sat on the edge of the rail car. When Papa said jump, jo Georgie jumped. Papa helped Georgie to his feet. If I hadn't seen you boys head this way, you'd be halfway to Texas by now. Georgie craned his neck, looking for Harley, but his friend had turned tail and run. Sorry, Papa. You know stealing's wrong, Papa said sternly. Georgie nodded, feeling the shame curl his toes. They walked back to the little mountain of coal. Papa scratched his head. Train's gone now can't give back the coal, but I've got an idea what to do with it. Help me load it. Do you think Georgie feels bad for what he did? Yeah, me too. Look, there's Georgie in the pile of coal and his dad is pulling him out just in time. And there's him and his dad again, picking up lumps of coal and putting it in the wheelbarrow. They rolled the wheelbarrow down the street to a house with a sagging front porch. This is Widow Colbach's house, Georgie said. Papa handed him two large chunks of coal. Leave this by her door, then knock twice and run on back here.
And look, there's Georgie's dad giving Georgie a piece, two pieces of coal to give to Mrs. Coolbotch. Georgie climbed the steps. The porch creaked under his weight. Dropping the coal, Georgie wrapped his knuckles on the door and ran back to Papa. They hid behind some bushes. After a moment, Mrs. Kolbach opened the door. When she spied the coal, she lifted it up, holding it to her chest and cried, God bless you. Georgie's heart felt so warm, it sent tingles right down to his toes. Who else, Papa? Come on, the children's home is just down the road. Why do you think they hid instead of giving Mrs. Kolbach the coal themselves? Yeah, maybe they were scared. And look, there's Georgie knocking on the door. And then there's Mrs. Kolbach picking up the pieces of coal and saying, God bless you. They tr trundled the car cart to a large brick house. Kids ran about in the yard. One of the boys came over to the fence. Georgie piled chunks of coal in his arms. Thank you, the boy said. We've been freezing all winter. He shivered in the thin short shirt he wore. Look. There's Georgie giving him a bunch of pieces of coal. And there's his dad talking to the owner of the children's house. Georgie hesitated, then took off his coat. Here, take this. It's too small for me anyway. The boy's eyes grew wide. You mean it? Georgie nodded, piling the coat on top of the boy's arms. Papa had many more stops to make, but the time they got home, Georgie was covered in coal dust from elbow to ears. And there was only one chunk of coal left. Who are we giving this last piece to? That's for your mother, Papa winked. Maybe she won't notice you gave away your good coat. Have you ever done something nice for someone like Georgie did for this little boy? Yeah, me too. And look, there's Georgie giving the little boy his coat as well as the coal. And there's Georgie and his dad with the wheelbarrow. And Georgie is asking, who are you giving this last piece to? They reached the porch. Georgie climbed the steps, but turned. Papa turned to go. Aren't you coming in, Papa? I still have a day's work to do, son. Run along now. Why do you think Georgie's dad took time out of his day to bring coal to people in need? Yeah, maybe he wanted to, or maybe it was to teach Georgie a lesson. And look, there's Georgie's dad, and there's Georgie holding the piece of coal, asking why his dad isn't coming in right away. Georgie hesitated, then he ran down the steps and threw his arms around Papa's waist. I love you, Papa. Papa patted Georgie on the head. I love you too, little coal thief. Do you think Georgie stole anything again? Yeah, I don't think he stole anything ever again either. And look, there's Georgie hu hugging his dad and saying, I love you, Papa. The end. Thank you so much for joining me for my read aloud. I hope you guys come back for more. Bye.